Hello, and welcome to What's Your Story? We have a fabulous guest today. She's a lady that I just aspire to be like her. I aspire to paint like her. She's amazing. She's one of Las Vegas leading artists. Her name is Chris Masglad. Chris, thank you for being here today. Thank you so much for the invite. I really appreciate it. Well, and those kind words. It's like, <laughs> oh my gosh, really? Thank you. Well, I think you know that's true. I, I've admired your work forever. You're such a great artist. And, and not only do you do wonderful real real life sort of things. You do people and portraits and animals, but you do the most amazing abstracts. I just wish I could just do a portion of the abstract that you do. You're wonderful. Very kind. Yeah. The one I like of your abstracts, it's one of my very favorites. It's a, a large orange piece that has butterflies. It has eyes, a person's eyes, and then it has butterflies, but they're actually coming off of the painting. Tell us about that one. This is one of my favorite ones, and I just did it. I did the first one, I've done four now, um, but did the first one just about a year ago. And it was, I love eyes. I so appreciate other artists who can do eyes that just draw you in. And it's one thing to do a face, but the eyes are what is really telling the story. And so the notion was, we're just gonna focus on that but bring the abstract that I love all the way into it. So what you've got is basically um, basically some boxes, mm -hmm. some rectangles that allow these eyes to see out and you don't know quite what you're looking at. And then you take this swath of butterflies and surround it and I think it tells a story, but it's the story that you want to hear yourself. Yes. So I've had people who have who have said to me, oh my goodness, those are, she's looking out and she's kind of trapped and they're flying free and she's, you know, she's watching them do that. I've had others who say that is all about hope and, you know, you're watching your, your wishes just go and and um, come true. Yes, yes. Well, they're absolutely wonderful. How did you get started in art? Art for me um, came at a very most recent age, I guess. It didn't start until after I retired. I've always appreciated beauty. And so when I think you learn when you're very young, that there are certain things. It's the sunsets, it's the sunrises, it's that mist that you see on the water, it's the skies where you've got the planes scratching, yes. um, scratching the surface, and you, you uh, start to appreciate things and you go, oh my gosh, that really made me feel something when mm. I looked at that scene. And I, I bought art my entire life, and always appreciated the original artists that you see at art fairs and craft shows and, and right. wherever else. And then when I retired, it dawned on me, guess what? <laughs> if I want to have continuous new art in my home, I think I'm going to have to be the one to uh, create it myself because the money's not always going to be there. So that was the launch of my artist career, is the retirement from my um, my career that... Uh, it's, it's interesting how many people, once they do retire from a career, like you, I mean, you were a big time executive with a major company, uh, but it's amazing to me how many people who retire from positions like that then do go into the arts. It's almost like, they haven't been able to do it all these years. And so now they have the opportunity and they discover these fabulous talents like you did. I mean, you are amazing. Well, thank you so much. I really do yeah. appreciate that. Now, it, what, what's your favorite genre? I would say that abstract is by far um, my love. And it is, it's because it can be anything your imagination wants it to be. And that to me is really quite inspiring. Tell us about a couple of your other abstracts we have here. Well, there's there's one that I called Living Large, mm -hmm. and it happens because I ended up taking 
a piece that I had had previously and didn't love too much anymore and said, okay, I'm going to do my own this time. And it, but it w was one that you say, okay, um, what are we going to include in it? I hadn't tried acrylic pour yet. Mm. Well, so this was my experiment with acrylic pour. It was also an experiment to use different materials. So a lot of metallics, a lot of um, different sorts of things to create a whole different um, impression. And then you get to frame it in this beautiful frame that you had before, and it's like, oh my gosh, it's magic. Yeah, that's wonderful, it's wonderful. Now, what gives you the most satisfaction relative to your artwork? I think um, the number one is how I feel about it, and would I be proud to hang it in my own home? Mm -hmm. um, but I have to say that that probably the uh, the biggest surprise to me was when someone bought one of my pieces who I didn't know. Yes. And so you go, okay, this this is someone who also wants to hang it in their home because they appreciate art for art's sake. Exactly, exactly. I own one of your pieces. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. And I was so proud and, and thrilled when you said well, you Well, I have it. to tell you, uh, I don't hang other people's art in my home. My, my home has my art in it, except for uh, Jan Schaefer. I have one of her abstracts in my home and the Dick Dick that you did. The Dick Dick. Yeah, let, <laughs> let's show them our Dick Dick. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. Um, so the Dick Dick was one that I really had so much fun with. And again, this, this goes back to the eyes for a second. If you, I saw an image on the internet and it was of a Dick Dick, which it, for those who may not know what a Dick Dick is, yes. it is from Africa. It's from South Africa, little tiny antelope. Little tiny antelope, but with the most gorgeous eyes. Mm -hmm big long lashes and so I saw this photo and I said I have to paint that and um, I think you exaggerated it just a little didn't you his, his eyelashes no no, <laughs> no. <laughs> those those were really that long wow. I think it's maybe a really young one but um, no it's they're not exaggerated uh, that painting is amazing and then and then you framed it so incredible I think the frame has a lot to do with the painting don't you think I always, uh, you know, if you're in a jury show or something, mm -hmm. you want to keep the frame as, you know, not simple. Yeah, very, very simple. But if you're hanging it in, in your own home for your own enjoyment, the framing is actually critical in my mind. And yes, I found this wonderful frame and that it was, I think I found the frame first and mm -hmm. that got me thinking Africa for some yes. reason. And that was... Well, when, when I saw it, came. I just it, I saw it in the show you did out at the City Lights Gallery in Henderson, mm -hmm. and I saw it, and I was just like, I have to have that, and <laughs> I, and there was just no question, I had to have it, and so it's hanging in my home, and I love it, and thank you for bringing it and showing it to us today. Now, what is the biggest challenge you face as an artist? I think the the biggest challenge is to keep being inspired. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you're, you're painting and all of a sudden it seems like everything you're doing isn't, I mean, it's okay, but it's not really the thing that you'd say, oh my gosh, I want everyone to see this piece. And so um, the inspiration part of it is a challenge, but you only have to wait a little bit, you know, let your mind go and look at different things and um, all of a sudden, there you are, you're inspired again. You're inspired all over again. <laughs> I find that when I'm, when I'm painting, let me ask you if this happens to you, when I'm painting regularly, it just keeps sort of coming. But then when I get distracted and I do something else for a while, I, I seem to have trouble getting back, getting inspired. Is, does that happen to other artists as well? I know that it happens to other artists and I know that it happens to me on occasion. And it is like you said, um, if, if you've walked away from it and other things have become more um, important for some period of time, yeah, it takes a little bit to get, to get back in that mode. And I continue to take, um, I'll call them art classes, mm -hmm. um, twice a week. And part, most of the reason is not only do I enjoy working with other artists, 
But the other part really is it forces me to say, what am I going to paint today? Yes. What am I working on? You know, what am I going to do better? What am I going to do different? Um, what other materials am I going to use? So when you're always challenging yourself to try to figure that out, it comes a little bit quicker. <laughs> well, I think one of the advantages of, of taking art classes is that you do um, have to plan what you're going to paint because you can't just go sit in a class and not do anything. And uh, that's one of the advantages. What might be some of the other advantages of, of belonging to a, a group like the City Lights Art Gallery in Henderson, uh, being a part of that or being um, in those classes? What, what might be some of the other advantages to doing that? I think there's a lot of advantages to being able to literally create with other artists. And it's amazing how often, you know, you walk in and you go, well, today I'm actually going to draw. And um, next week, someone else is bringing their pencils and, and whatever mm -hmm. else. And so it, it, you influence each other. And I get influenced just as much as I influence anyone um, else. But that that's certainly one part of it. The second is when you're looking at something and you go, okay, I know it needs something right here. Um, you can't always see it in the moment, but if you turn it around and say, hey, folks, mm -hmm. um, what, do you, what are you seeing? What's this missing? What can I add? What, you know, what approach might you take next? Um, or I've almost got this little section exactly right but there's something missing and someone will go, oh, well, an eye is a little crooked or, you know, no, you need greater contrast in color or maybe you've got too much texture and, mm -hmm. and that, that's drawing your eye away from whatever the focal point of uh, your painting is. So it's that collaboration yes. is really, really important um, in my mind. And the, the other big thing, and this is particularly true at City Lights, um, is that when you're surrounded with so many creative people from mm -hmm. all different genre. Right. So whether, you know, okay, mostly I paint, um, but we have wonderful photographers, we have wonderful artists that do pencil work, we have wonderful um, assemblage artists, we have wonderful, you know, just the whole spectrum of what's going on. And at the gallery, you end up having social events yes. that really turn into learning events because as you talk to people about what they're seeing on the wall, um, you learn things yes. and you learn, you, you figure out what their resources are, what their inspirations are, what um, really gives them, you know, the boost to keep on going and creating and, and uh, developing their own, their own style, their own work. I find that uh, a lot of artists, in fact, almost all the artists I know are very positive people. Don't you? Do I, I think that's true. And I don't know whether that's because the art is providing an outlet on um, for them. Um, you're saying positive, and I think that's true. I think it creates people who think young. Ah. And um, I had an opportunity to, uh, to work at one of the major design studios during my career. Mm -hmm. And I swear all those people to me, you know, they were my age and I was only 20 something when they were there, yes. but they weren't, they were probably 60 and, and whatever, but they thought young, they acted young, they were open to ideas. Mm -hmm. And I think that's incredible. So that's to me what art and creativity does for the individual. It kind of keeps us, keep, well, I think it keeps our mind active. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It keeps our mind active and we're constantly creating. We're trying to create something something new. I, I, I believe that's so very important as we get older. Absolutely right. As we get older. So what would you tell someone if they said to you, I'd really love to get into art, but I can't even draw a stick figure? I hear that so often. <laughs> and I, quite honestly, I used to say that because again, my forte was not art through un, until I retired. 
And then it was, okay, let me just try it. And because I had never tried to do it, I mean, literally picking up a paintbrush, I would have been in probably second grade before I retired. And um, so the thing is, if you take a couple classes, which by the way, City Lights offers yes. Um, yes. for all levels of experience, not, not just experienced artists, but also beginners. And it seems to me that um, when you're saying I can only do stick figures, you just have to say, okay, we're going back to when you, you did used to do stick figures and make something out of it. We're going to make sure that your mind is absolutely opened. And we're gonna talk about some of the skills that can help you see shapes, see images, see colors, um, see shades, and let those be those stepping stones to say, no, oh my gosh, I put something on this piece of paper and it looked like something. Yes. It looked like a landscape or it looked like a face right. or it looked like a body. Yes. And I think that every little one of those little steps, you can do it. Yes. Anybody, anybody can do it. I want you to start teaching because I need to come and study with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that brings up another, I think, really important point. And, and um, it was actually through you uh, that we were doing the artist's way, if you recall. Yes, yes. And there's part of that that you try to reinforce, I am an artist, I am an artist, I am an artist. Because quite frankly, knowing that I did not have the academic training, I did not have the um, art history background um, that so many other artists have that you admire and that you respect, that actually was a, a block for me. Um, and until you can kind of convince yourself, no, you know, okay, maybe I'm more, well, I don't want to say self-taught because I've, I've studied yes, with- Yes, you've studied with a lot of good, good instructors. Exactly right. But, but uh, you, don't, you don't need to let anything hold you back from what you truly enjoy and what you're proud of when you finish Mm -hmm. um, a piece. And you are incredibly, incredibly good. And uh, see, that's the thing about art and about creativity is, I don't know if anybody can teach us creativity. Or, or Yes, they can teach us how to do technique, but I don't think anyone can teach us how to um, imagine what it is that we get in our mind and then we put on, on. like you did a monkey. Tell us about your monkey. <laughs> I, um, I will tell you about the monkey canvas first, because the canvas originally was a, it was, I love the shape of the canvas. It was unusual. It was tall and, and narrow. And I did, did something in, in uh, a class that I was in, and it came across as very Asian. It was just strokes and it was simple. And, and I thought it was beautiful. And I hung it in the gallery for a little while. You know, you walk by and you go, okay, not sure exactly how that's going to play. Um, but I walked by it and I said, you know what? It's beautiful, but it's not enough. So what's missing? And I decided to put a monkey in it. So painted this monkey, very, very, um, cute face, wonderful, just, you know, he's going, who, me? Um, and it's it's one of those where you go, all right, that's, that's nice, that's cool too. And then that's not enough. So we're, we've got a monkey. And doesn't everybody have one of those drawers full <laughs> of keys that you don't even know what they unlock anymore? Yes. So the next part of the process was putting key, literal keys that I don't know what they go to on this painting and um, adhering them to it. And so we have the brass monkey. I love it. I love it. And he's fun. He's and beautiful. He makes people smile. Whenever I've had him out, people just smile. And 
that by itself is a wonderful reward. Yes, yes. Well, he's a magnificent. I love him. And I'm glad we're getting to show him to our audience here because he's just He's just unique, <laughs> as are you. <laughs> well, we're running uh, out of time. I really want to thank you for being here today. You've uh, given us an insight into your creativity and into City Lights Gallery. And I hope that people will come to City Lights and take a look at your artwork. Would you like to tell them how to get in touch with you or how to uh, uh, contact Certainly. you in some way? Certainly. Um, my website is mazartdesign.com and anybody can go there and I have to admit I'm not real good at um, keeping it updated but uh, nonetheless. Well, that's because you paint so much. I know. You paint so often. I mean some of us you know we we do a painting and then we get it up you know we get it up and then we do another one but you you just keep painting. <laughs> I need more walls is what I, <laughs> what I really need. Um, or they can uh, contact me through City Lights Art Gallery, where usually I do have um, work that is on the walls there. And phone number 702-466-5953. Repeat that again, just in case. 702-466-5953. Five, five, I love doing commissions and uh, have done several for uh, portraits of um, people and actually just got another one not too Great. Not this past week Great. and so i'm looking forward to that but it's fun it's it's a challenge every day every day and you just have to enjoy every moment of it. Well, thank you for being here. It's wonderful to have you with us. And thank you for joining us. And if you would like to uh, see any of Chris's work, go out to City Lights. It's at 4 Army Street in Henderson, Nevada. Is it 4 or 3? Three? 3. 3. 3. 3 Army Street. 3 East Army Street. Oh. Well, let me get that right. If you would like to see any of Chris's work, go out to Henderson, Nevada, 3 East Army Street, and, and go in and look at all the beautiful art. There's, there's everything there. There's photography and sculpture and jewelry and art. Just go there and take a look and, uh, and enjoy. And join us again on What's Your Story? Because we always love to have you with us.